For cheap Ultimate Team Coins, go and check out ufifa.com and use my discount code EGHD at the checkout to get 5% off your order. Hey what's up guys, Jack here and welcome back to a FIFA 15 video. Today we're actually going to be doing like a tutorial kind of talk about the best formations in FIFA 15 and the most effective ones. Uh, ones that are going to change the way that you play, and well not change the way that you play, but actually make you win games uh, because a lot of people have been struggling this year kind of like finding out which formations are good for them and there are still people out there that don't really know which formation is best for them so I'm going to talk you through five of the best formations I found from my experience not just uh, playing with these formations but coming up against these formations and that's quite a big thing as well I've you know I've been playing in like division I've played let's say 50 games in division 3 plus it's not a lot but I'm a very experienced Ultimate Team player and YouTuber, so I kind of know my stuff about formations and what's best. I'm also going to break down um, what players to play in each position as well, not just you know choosing the highest rated players or the fastest players, because it's not about that. Um, obviously, pace is very uh, important in this game, but I'm also going to talk about work rates and what kind of other stats to look for. So if we can smash 1,500 likes, get this video around, share it out there, and uh, let your friends know whatever you want to do about that. Um, a little disclaimer before, before we get into the video as well, there are going to be no three to back formations and no five at the back formations. Although they are fun to use, I just don't really see them um, being. They're usually one or the other. Three at the backs really attacking, five at the backs really defensive. I'm showing you five, uh, four, no, <laughs> five formations with four at the back, which are very balanced and good for winning games, basically. So let's get into the list. I've been talking long enough. Let's go. So. First formation is going to be the 4 3 1 2 formation. I've been using this uh, for my Road to Glory series. You've been watching me. Um, you can't you can't disagree with me that it's effective. So, as you can see, 4 3 1 2, and obviously, when you pick a goalkeeper, I'd recommend just going for you know the highest rated player you can pretty much because that's how goalkeepers work it doesn't really you know there's not a particular stack stat about the goalkeeper that makes him amazing reflexes and diving seems to be like the major ones but if you're everything's over 80 then you should be good with a goalkeeper and it's they're usually not that expensive but the next two or the next player that we can put into the team is going to be your center backs now obviously you want to make it so they get the full chemistry but what you're going to look for is uh, medium medium work rates medium high work, uh, work rates or low high work rates and uh, I'd recommend sticking to 70 plus pace anything near 80 is ideal that is more than enough and then obviously like you want some good defending you want some 75 plus defending and also 78 physical stats um, some people have quite low physical stats, for example, uh, really tall players that aren't very good at jumping. They might have high strength, but they might have low jumping. So have a look at their in-game stats. If they've got high strength and low jumping, but they're six foot four, it's not a big deal. So they might even have 75 physical stats. It's cool. Anyway, moving into the wingers, uh, not the wingers, the left back slash right back. Uh, we have stats here where I'd recommend 80 plus pace, but the work rates are very important on the left back and right back, especially depending on your formation. So... You're going to want medium, medium work rates. That's very like balanced uh, work rates for a left back and right back. But there aren't many top left backs and right backs with that work rate. So you usually get them in high medium, which is good. But it can leave you a little bit stranded in defence sometimes. Um, they're very attacking. So it depends. If you feel like you're comfortable, comfortable enough and you've got a very solid defence, uh, two centre backs that are quite fast. Yeah, high medium is going to do you fine. Or even medium high is also very good. Now moving into the centre mids for this formation, um, I'm going to be rocking um, medium medium work rates, medium high work rates and high medium work rates. I don't think you want low work rates anywhere on these players unless it's a CDM kind or someone in the middle that has high defensive work rates just to help your defence out and um, you don't need a lot of pace on these players. You can have 70 pace. Uh, that's absolutely fine as well, but you're going to want a, a balanced kind of player, someone like Leroy Fur, like a cheap Torre kind of player where they've got some pace, they've got the strength, some dribbling, decent defending, good physical stats, you know, decent passing as well. Good shooting is not really something you need to look for because, let's be honest, you don't score that many long shots in this game. You do score some, but not that many. It's not a big, important thing to look for when building a team. Um, and that's pretty much it for the whole of the centre mids. Now, I do recommend your central centre mid to be more defensive minded. So it should have like medium high, whereas the other two could be like high medium or medium medium, something like that. Now, moving into the cam position, we have work rates of medium medium again, high medium and medium low. So sometimes it's actually good for the cam not to come back because especially in this formation, you've got three, three midfielders already. He doesn't need to track back. He should be waiting up top, waiting for the ball and delivery into him. Then he can supply to the strikers as well. And I recommend him having like 85 pace, um, quite agile. It, they don't need to be small. They could be like 5'10 or something like that. But usually anything over six foot, their agility goes down and their, you know, just generally their dribbling goes down. Not all the time, but just in general. Uh, passing needs to be good, obviously, to get to the strikers as well. Now moving into the last position of this 
uh, formation, it's going to be the striker. Now, on this card, I've put just 85 plus pace. Obviously, it doesn't mean that. It's just because if I put 85 pace and 85 dribbling, then some people aren't going to have the shooting. Like, for example, Obabo is a super effective player on this game. He's got the pace, he's got the strength, um, dribbling and stuff. But then there's players like Messi, who hasn't, haven't got the strength, but he's got super high dribbling, super high pace and agility, amazing shooting and passing. So it re I'd just recommend the main stat that you want to look for really is pace because I'm not going to lie guys, when you get to a competitive level, you do need pace. And there's plenty of pacey players out there to pick from, whether you want some skillers, uh, some strong players, some small players that are agile. Everyone's got pace, well a lot of players have got pace on this game. And uh, as a summary for this formation, you can see short passing is great, the midfield is nice and tight, and uh, it's a very aggressive formation as well. Once your opponent has the ball, uh, you've always got a player very close to them. For example, like a 4-3-3 is quite open, whereas this one is really tight. Um, the downside is there's not much width, and um, that can be looked at as a bad thing, but at the end of the day, you don't really score much from playing wide. The only problem is people can attack you from the, from the whip wide coming in so you've got to watch out for that and uh, keep your midfielders nice and tight and at the end of the day you're not going to concede many crosses anyway and uh, yeah wingers can't get full chemistry so what I mean by that is basically if you want to play a right mid or a right, right wing playing as a striker it's just not going to get you full chemistry you'll have to play on six or seven which is absolutely fine if you've watched my road to glory quadrado royce they were absolutely amazing my best strikers probably uh from from well through the whole series so that works absolutely fine the next formation guys is going to be the four triple two or the four two 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 and it's going to be a, obviously a four at the back formation so i'm not going to speak about any of the players at the back it's obviously goalkeeper you want some uh, 80 rated player plus uh, center backs you want 70 plus pace in general um, left backs and right backs good work rates with 80 plus pace and you know good defending and physical stats now again right let's get into the the midfield of this team straight into the midfield um, the cdms um, these players i have left empty on the pace like you do not need pacey players uh, as your CDMs in this team you can play Kadira Kadira is amazing as a CDM I even played a guy that's I think he's Polish and his name is kind of like Kry Kawaki or something like that he's got like 59 pace 87 physical stats 80 defending um, terrible shooting terrible dribbling but he's a CDM he's not fast but he was in the right position because he had good work rates and he knew how to play as a defensive midfielder so when you're looking for this position you don't always need to look at pace someone that I really like in this game is someone like Luis Gustavo he's got something like 70 pace which is good but he's also very strong in the right position and he's very good at defending basically now moving into the cam position we actually have or I'd recommend someone with 85 plus pace now if you've got 82 83 it's, it's not going to be a major problem but generally 85 plus pace is going to be good good dribbling as well 80 pace plus sorry 80 dribbling plus and then passing 75 plus uh, passing because you want to be able to one two with your CDM or your strikers and it's kind of you need that passing that one two kind of thing you might actually find that um, a cam from the other side of the pitch wants to throw uh, uh, LBY your other striker so it's good to have good passing there obviously if you can pick one with good shooting like 80 shooting then do so but it's not needed because your strikers are going to be the main uh, part of this team now moving into the strikers again I've left the card with just 85 pace but because strikers literally vary from super high dribbling to super high shooting to super high pass well not super high passing but some do again like you could pick someone what I'd recommend is having someone quite small agile and then someone a little bit taller they don't need to be literally like Peter Crouch or anything like that but for example Ramos and Royce they're two players I used um, in my road to glory and they worked off each other so well because one was more agile quicker and then one was a little bit slower not too much slower but he was a much stronger and better in the air winning headers and stuff like that so that works well for the team now as a summary for this formation uh, the short passing is fantastic the build-up is quite good it's a tight midfield again very aggressive quite similar to the 4-3-1-2 in the way that you know the pros are uh, and also that the negatives are wingers can't get on full chemistry because there's no right mid left mid formation you know there's no no position to put in those uh, actual players apart from that fantastic formation so guys, getting into the next formation, it's actually going to be a 4-4-2, and this formation has a left mid and a right mid, so it's going to be a little bit of a change from the two formations we've covered already. Now, as you can tell, it's a forward back formation. The same same talk about the, the defense. You know, goalkeeper's got to be kind of like 80 rated plus, make sure he's on full chemistry, the best goalkeeper you can get, basically. Center back, 70 plus pace, 75 uh, plus defending, 78 plus physical stats, tall and strong generally are the way to go left back right back 80 plus pace and good defending and physical stats again now let's get into the midfield so center mids first again very kind of similar to the 4-3-1-2 um center mids basically that are 
good at everything. Or you could go for, let's say, for example, uh, Kadira and then someone like Rodriguez. One that's more attacking, one that's more defensive. You can have opposites, but what I don't recommend is having two defensive or two attacking. Um, it's got to be one or the other or in the middle, if that makes sense. Now, the work rates. I don't really you don't really want to pick a work rate that has low on attacking or defensive either you want them to be working around a lot they need to be the engine type of players like Dave Rossi for example um, or even Vidal, Pogba those types of players are absolutely important to have in this team now the left mids and right mids let's get into those this is a new position we haven't really talked about so um, I'd recommend 85 plus pace a lot of uh, midfielders in this game or a lot of BPL players have actually looked move to left mid um, or right mid in this in this uh, FIFA and a lot of them don't actually have a lot of pace so it's not needed for 85 pace but it's going to make the difference it's going to open a lot more um, opportunities for you guys to attack into and so many times in this position on well with this formation as well you'll get a chance to one two with your centre mid or your striker and it will make the difference by having that little bit more pace but as I, as I said it's not necessary good dribbling is a, necess a necessary thing to have because you will have to get around uh, players a lot on the wing in my opinion or from my experience passing you need to have good passing as well defending it's not necessary if you have medium defensive work rates um, he could be a bad defender it doesn't really matter too much because they're not going to be putting in super important tackles because because they're on the wing there it won't be in the penalty box it won't be anywhere near the penalty box or it shouldn't be so shouldn't be a problem now let's move into the strikers again it's the same same talk about strikers um, try and pick two players that work well with each other so choosing two players just like Messi isn't going to work well it, you know Messi is a, a blinding player so it will work but what I'm trying to say is don't pick a, a tall one and another tall one or two small ones too you know it just doesn't work so tall and small or two two in the middle kind of players that work well with good work rates now you can have medium low it's the only kind of position that i'd recommend a low work rate apart from the center back because you can have low attacking work rates on the center backs just like you can have low defensive work rates on a striker so that would work as well so as a summary for this team um, it's got a very good midfield very deep and wide midfield and it's going to be quite hard to crack but at the same time because you've got such a deep and wide midfield sometimes the strikers do feel a bit lonely and left out uh, to you know put in their own effort basically so you need to be very good at doing independent runs with your strikers not independent all the time but you know let's say he goes ultra defensive and he's winning one nil you need to be able to do something special with those players so i'd recommend four star skillers on the strikers just so you can do those chops and uh, berber spins just to try and catch your opponent off a little bit um, it's got a lot of options for pace as well because you've got the left mids right mids and the two strikers which are vital to have pace now wingers don't get involved enough that is the, the one downside to this um, if you put walcott right mid he might score like three goals in five games where if you put him a striker he'll score like 10 goals in five games like that's that's the poor side to this team uh, it's just the left mids and right mids don't get involved too much but you can play you know right mids as a right forward and get put him in the strike position and get still seven chemistry so it's down to you guys what you want to do there the fourth formation is going to be a 4-3-3 in brackets 4 and that formation basically means you've got your, your striker, your two wingers and then you've got two centimeters and one cam and I find this is the best 4-3-3 formation. Now it depends if you're building a team with a player in mind. If you want to use Messi, I'd recommend playing like a false nine, put him at centre forward. But if you want to, you know, if you're thinking of the formation before you build the team, I'd go with this one. And again, four at the back formations, so you know the drill. The goalkeeper needs to be a good one. Centre backs need to be fairly fast. Left and right backs need to be fast with the good work rates. Now, let's move into the centre mids again. The same kind of thing. We've got two centre mids, just the same as a 4-4-2, except the, the centre mids are further apart in this team. So, uh, you're going to want them you know quite defensively minded i'd recommend a medium medium or even a medium high just because that that cam is going to provide enough um, help for your striker and enough assisting and you know supply for your striker that you don't really need to have them pushing up the pitch too much so medium medium or medium high now if you want to if you want to play one high medium and one medium high that would work as well and uh, yeah let's move into the cam so the cam needs to be fast they need to have you know if they're not fast, they can play cam if they want, but playing someone like Xavi as a cam, it's just not going to work. You're going to be, if you're playing someone of your own standards, they're going to absolutely crack down on that straight away. Pace is very important in this kind of role. Um, so 85 plus pace is recommended. 80 dribbling is also recommended because there's going to be a lot of uh, change in direction for this kind of position. Uh, there's going to be times where you're going to give people the dummy, change, turn around and play a through ball to your left or right wing. So 
good dribbling and also good passing to get that pass off. Now shooting isn't a necessary thing. As we all know, you can have like 60 shooting just like a Barbo kind of does. He's got 66 finishing or something. If you're right next to the goal, you're going to score. But this, this kind of position, you know, someone like Schneider would be great. He doesn't have the pace, but he does have the shooting and the passing and the dribbling. So let's move into the left wings and the right wings of this team. And as you can see, um, work rate wise, you can go with a high low. That would work fine. Someone like Depay or Ronaldo. Uh, medium low as well would also work. But um, what I like to use is actually high medium because if they don't come back at all, sometimes they literally run out to the corner flag. Um, it's just ridiculous. Like when I used to pie in my team, in my Netherlands team, he was, he was just running a little bit too far and then no, never ever coming back. So having low defensive work rates can be a little bit of a struggle sometimes, especially if you like to do short passing rather than LBYs like myself too much. And then getting into the striker, obviously, pretty much the same as all of these. But this striker needs to be able to do a little bit of everything. Put, you know, having a small player. You're gonna you're gonna lose out on some things, but then again, if you have a tall player, you're not gonna have the agility and the, and the pace as as you would with a small player. So it's really down to your choice. But I'd I'd go for someone that's kind of like anywhere between five nine and five eleven. Um, again, it doesn't need to be if it's two inches tall on that. Don't worry about it. But someone like a Suarez, that's you know all rounded, complete striker, that kind of thing. Now. For a team, I actually used this team with the Netherlands team. I used a silver, 71 rated El Kabir, and he was amazing in this in this formation. He had high medium uh, work rates, and he suited this kind of uh, formation very, very well. As a summary for this team, um, the wide play is brilliant. Um, it offers more kind of um, open space. So, you, you know, if you've got really fast wingers, once they've overtaken the left back or the right back, you're going to be putting a lot of pressure on the centre backs. And sometimes they might slide in their own penalty area. It's going to draw a lot of fouls. So, the open space is a good thing. You've got space and pace. If you've got, as I said, 90 plus pace wingers, it's going to be amazing. One downside to having all that pace and all that aggression is it's going to be very attacking. Therefore, you can be counted easily. But that's when you need to have the right centre mids. If you have the right centre mids, you'll be absolutely fine. So make sure you pick some good all-rounded centre mids that can also play in defence quite well. All right, guys. So moving into the last formation, we have the 4 3 Two, one. It's a formation that allows people to use the likes of Ronaldo, Bale, uh, Royce, Quadrado, all on full chemistry, but by playing them quite close to pretty much striker position. Not quite striker position, but very or thereabouts, if that makes sense. Again, four at the back formation, so you guys know the drill. I'm not going to go through that. But the centre mids, you've got three centre mids, so you kind of want the same kind of setup as you would for 4 3 1 2, except I'd recommend your central midfielder, one in the middle, to have. The, you know high defensive uh, that that's a must for me if they don't have high defensive they must have low medium or medium medium if they have high medium then it's uh, my from my experience it just didn't work so that's something i'd recommend now as the the, the two the left mids then left center mid and the right center mid medium mediums high mediums they're absolutely fine on this formation it's a very attacking formation but moving into left forward and the right forward i'd recommend Something like a you know right wing left wing kind of player, someone that's got a lot of pace, 88 plus pace with good dribbling as well. Now if they have good shooting, that's fine. But the main things are pace, dribbling, and you know a little bit of passing because there's going to be it's going to be very 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 congested up front, especially with three players that are basically playing in the same lane basically. So. If you use cheap players, like uh, 78 rated players that have high pace and dribbling, what you might find is one game, they'll play amazing. The next game, they'll play bad. And that's because their positioning, their in-game positioning, they'll just be running into each other, not creating enough space. It's not your fault, it's the fact they haven't got good uh, positioning. But this can be the most deadly formation if you have Ronaldo, Messi and Bale or something like that because their in-game stats or their positioning is amazing. They have all the pace, all the shooting, all the dribbling, all of that stuff, all of the good stuff basically. But the striker for the team, again guys, it's you know it's the same kind of talk. If you want to go for someone that's kind of like a complete forward, that would be the best option. Someone like Suarez, um, as I mentioned before, you can if you got if you're gonna play someone like Ronaldo uh, next to Bale, then putting Messi up front is gonna be absolutely fine. Although he's quite small, Messi's one of the better players or the best players in Ultimate Team this year, simply because his dribbling, his pace, and everything like that. Uh, but as a summary for this team, you can see the wingers. On full chemistry, that is a big plus uh, for those of you that want to play basically Ronaldo practically up front without losing uh, chemistry points. It's got a strong midfield, it's got the three midfielders that uh, feel kind of like every kind of role. And then the, the weaknesses, which are sometimes it's a little bit too tight up front if you're using low rated players with bad in game stats. 
And that is going to actually round off this video. And I know it's been almost, well, it's been a 20 minute video, uh, but I thought this kind of video needs to be detailed. Um, and if you guys want to use a formation, um, it's only gonna take like five minutes to speak about that formation. So I thought I'd put it into one video. I hope you have enjoyed it. If you have, drop a like on the video, share the video around. It'll be greatly appreciated. This video took a lot longer than you would think because the graphics are pretty poor. I've done the graphics, but it's been quite hard to do it. So dropping a like would be, mean a lot, 1500 is the like target for this video also make sure you are subscribed if you're watching this video right now you're not subscribed make sure you do so you don't miss any more helpful videos like this i guess and uh, i think i'm gonna round it off here so thank you for watching guys i'll see you guys later Bye bye